All right, let's work a new example here. Um, sine x times cosine x plus sine x equals 0. And I'm going to solve this with a technique known as factoring and then something called the zero product property. You don't really have to know the name of that. So let's just say that this was um, a times b plus a equals zero. See there's an a in every term so you can factor out the a. So I factored out the a. That's the factoring part. The zero product property says if two things are multiplied together that gives you zero, either a's got to be zero or b's got to be zero. So once you do the factoring, see here how you've got two things multiplied together. You got the a and then you got this factor b plus one. So what you do is you set each one of these equal to zero and solve. So this one is already solved. Here you would minus 1, so you get negative 1. Alright, let's, uh, let's um, do the same technique on the trig equation. So I have two terms. Each term has a sine x, and I want to factor out a sine x. So I'm left with cosine x plus 1. Don't forget, sine x divided by sine x is 1, not 0. So two things multiplied together that give me zero. So I'm going to set each one equal to zero and solve. So sine x equals zero and cosine x plus one equals zero. So let's first take sine x equals zero. So writing it in our arc sine or inverse notation, x equals arc sine of zero. Where is um, the sine zero. Oh, and I forgot again to put our degree or radian on here. Let's do radian. Okay, so to two pi. Right. Um, okay, so let's go back to this one. Where is the sine zero? Um, the sine is zero at zero and at pi. So hold tight with those two. Let's move over to our next equation subtract 1 from both sides, so you get cosine x equals negative 1. Writing it in our inverse or arc cosine notation, x equals inverse cosine of negative 1. Where is the cosine negative 1? Well, that's at pi. So our solutions are x equals 0 and pi. Uh, notice how pi is a duplicate here. I don't have to state it twice. So remember I said in the beginning, generally we get double solutions because, um, because there are two places on the unit circle where values exist. Okay, this is why I said generally, because here's one of the places it doesn't work. The cosine is only negative 1 in one location. So that's why you only got one, one solution here. All right, so there are your two solutions. Now, before I close out this example, um, what I want to do is I want to give you a caution. So sometimes what students want to do is eliminate, you know, right and rightly so, eliminate some of the factors um, in the equation to make it easier to solve. So sometimes students want to do this. Oh, look, I can just divide each term by sine x. Right? Did that right? Divided every term by sine x. Well, that gives me cosine x plus 1 equals 0. And then I subtract 1 from both sides. Cosine x equals negative 1. And then we already did that one, and we get pi. So look what happened if you try and divide every term by sine x. You totally miss the solution 0. So a caution, caution, don't ever divide by sine x or cosine x or when you're solving algebra equations by x because when you do you lose your solutions so don't do that don't divide that out or you're going to lose some of your solutions <laughs>